So, after four grueling months of researching video compression techniques and developing my own video compression standard, I've managed to turn what started off as nothing short of a pipe dream into a reality. I've programmed a full motion video codec optimized for real-time video playback on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. And the best part is that's not all. I've also programmed the whole suite of tools to aid in the development process if you utilize my video codec. As you can see here, I've programmed a video playback tool that can skip forwards, backwards, or jump to anywhere in your video, as well as mute the video, lower or increase the volume of the audio, and load other videos from the same instance as the original window. I've also provided a command line tool that utilizes a tiny linear script file inspired from Quake 2 that can automate the encoding and decoding process of videos. It works with a wide variety of image and audio file formats for the sake of flexibility. Now, I mentioned earlier that what I'm presenting to you is a full motion video codec. Now, that begs the question, what is full motion video? Full motion video is typically a short form pre-recorded video file lasting no more than 10 minutes to present cutscene or interactive content to a video game. Full motion videos can range from a very brief splash screen to a fully fleshed out movie action scene. Full motion video is distinct from more standard video compression codecs because of its particular use in video games and consoles where file size, storage medium, processor speed, video quality, and decoding speed can greatly alter the approach to video compression utilized for each game or console. As per the usual, I've given an over-the-top name to my latest project, and I've dubbed it AGMV, standing for Adaptive Graphics Motion Video. Over-the-top name aside, AGMV is a block-based inter-frame video codec that utilizes three layers of color quantization, motion compensation, LZ77 and its, and its descendant, LZSS compression, and various bitstream flags in order to achieve suitable compression to run on low-end hardware such as the Game Boy Advance. AGMV follows a two-pass static encoding procedure. Essentially, we perform two passes over the image sequence. The first pass applies a technique in mathematics called quantization to the image data. Quantization essentially maps a larger set of data into a smaller subset of that data, resulting in an approximation of those original values. In the context of image compression, we apply quantization onto image data for two reasons. The first is that reducing the amount of unique colors that any individual pixel can be can greatly augment the likelihood of adjacent pixels sharing the same value. This allows us to use data compression algorithms that can represent reoccurring pixels in far less memory um, as opposed to large groups of standalone pixels. The second reason is that we can represent color values in far less space in a computer's memory. Here is high-level C pseudocode of converting 24-bit and 32-bit true and deep color images into 16-bit high color images. While some quality is lost during quantization, I would argue that when 60 frames are being blasted at your eyes per second, these artifacts become much less noticeable to the human eye. Now, this is only the first layer of quantization where we essentially have reduced the amount of unique colors that we've worried about from 16,777,215 unique colors to 32,667 unique colors. We want to further reduce that amount to 512 colors. Now, we can achieve this by keeping in track of the occurrences of each pixel in the in a data buffer referred to as a histogram. Now, this histogram will essentially just keep track of the frequency of each um, you know pixel inside of the image data. And after we've iterated over the entire image sequence, we sort the histogram by the five 512 most likely colors to occur. The next section of the video is going to compare the visual quality and compression rate differences between AGMV and other prominent full motion video codecs throughout gaming history, and I'll leave you as the judge to decide how AGMV stacks up to the other titans of full motion video.
Alrighty then, so if you've made it this far into the video, I'm sure that you're beginning to think, well, what you've shown me thus far in the video is all fine and dandy, but damn it, get to the point. How do I essentially convert my MP4s, my MP2s, my AVIs, and any other video format, or raw image sequences for that matter, and convert it into your video format? Um, so I can put it on the GBA and have some cool tech demos. Well, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to my GitHub page, which I'll link in the description of this video and probably put as a pinned comment, and you're going to want to clone my repository. And this is essentially going to contain all of the source code that you need in order to um, compile um, my source code here and essentially create your own programs. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you're going to want to go into this extern directory and you're going to want to compile my image library. Now, I decided to embed my image library Agile into AGMV to provide a bunch of image formats. A lot of them mostly, you know, archaic in nature, but I do provide some more modern formats in order for you to be able to essentially encode your own image sequences um, and load them into AGMV pretty easily through Agile. So we're gonna go into Extern here and we're gonna see a, another directory that's called Agile. This is gonna contain the source code from image library. So inside a command prop here, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna CD into it. And I've already provided a make file that essentially has a bunch of instructions that's going to compile all of the source code for Agile and um, nothing to do, oh wait. Let me go ahead and show you what that's like. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that. I'm just gonna go ahead and compile all of our source code into object code. So it's gonna create a bunch of .os. And once we do that, we're gonna call in um, a function that I put into my make file that's called make archive. And it's going to archive all of those um, various object files into one you know, file that is, you know, that we refer to as a static library and it's going to have a single .a extension that we're going to put here in the lib directory so we can link it later against um, HEMV. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and do make archive, call that. It's going to create this lib .a, and you're going to want to put it here inside of lib. Now, because I already have it there, I don't really need that. And of course, once you're done with that, you can go ahead and do make clean so you can get rid of all that unnecessary object code and that executable once you're done. Now we're going to come back here to the main directory and we're going to go ahead and click make again so we can compile the AGMV source code and link it against Agile, as you can see here. Um, so now that we've done that, um, obviously you're going to want to take whatever you know video file that you have and you're going to extract the raw images from it. Now here's another important thing to note about AGMV. So depending on what optimization flag you need, you're going to want your frame rate to either be divisible by two or divisible by four. Now, why this is, I'm going to explain a bit further later, but for now, just take it um, for what it is and take it as verbatim. So we're going to want to extract the individual, um, not only the audio file, but the individual image um, sequence of the video. And then we're also going to want to convert the frame rate. So I'm going to use the ever the ever useful FFmpeg library in order to do this. The first thing here, um, I'm going to go ahead and CD out of this. I'm going to CD to FFmpeg. I'm going to call FFmpeg argonaut.mp4. I'm going to go ahead and call filter v fps equals fps, which equals 24. Now 24 is a sweet spot number because it's divisible by two and divisible by four. So we can essentially apply any optimization flag and not have to worry about that at all. I'm going to go ahead and call that arg.mp4. Then I'm going to call, well, then I'm going to make a directory that's called arg. I'm going to call ffmpeg arg.mp4. I'm going to grab arg, my WAV file, call it arg.wav. And then I'm going to go and extract the frames from it. So I'm going to call arg agmv frame underscore percent d.dmp. Alrighty. So now that we have that, let's go grab those two things and paste them in our AGMV directory. Now, there are two ways that you can code AGMVs. Obviously, one is to use the C library that I set up for you, or it's to go the easier route and use the command line tool. Now, I'm going to essentially show you how to do both and how to specifically set it up to run it on the GBA. So the first thing we're going to do here is going to come over to this main file. 
I'm going to create an instance of an AGMV structure. I'm going to call the create function to create an instance of it. The first parameter here that we need is um, essentially how many unique frames do we have in our image sequence. So here we can see we have 212 versus 1, right? So we have 211 unique images. It's at 320 by 240 at 24 frames per second. Now, in order to connect our audio file, our WAV file to AGMV, we're going to call a utility function that's called AGMV WAV to audio track. Now, AGMV currently only supports three audio files, the WAV file, the old AI, AI, AIFF file, and the AIFC variant um, on the old Macintosh computers. So the first thing we're going to do is going to provide arg.wav, going to provide the AGMV structure. I'm going to call the main encoder function, so AGMV encode AGMV. So first we're going to pass it that structure. We're going to give it a name, arg.agmv. We're going to put the directory you can find it, um, all of our images in arg. The base name of it is AGMV frame underscore. As you can see, all of them have that basic layout, except the fact that they have a frame count after it, right? So that's why it's a base name. Then it's the image type, um, their BMPs, and it goes from 1 to 211 at 320 by 240 at 24 FPS. Now here's where the quirk comes into play, so the optimization flags. So if you can go to the include directory and defines, I essentially wrote out exactly what each optimization flag is and um, what it actually does. So here you can see optimization flag 1 has 512 colors, therefore it's, a, it's the version 1 bitstream and it has heavy PDFS. Optimization flag 2 is in 256 color mode, which means that it's a version 2 bitstream, and it only has light PDFS. PDIFS stands for Progressive Differential Interpolated Frame Skipping. It's a form of very, very, very simple motion compensation that essentially, if a certain amount of frames, or really if you look at two frames, right, if they're similar enough, we can create an intermediate frame by interpolating between both of them and replacing that inside of, you know, when we're encoding it into the video. And that's how we can reduce the amount of frames that we're represented in the video format without losing any visual quality due to gaps in motion and it results in higher compression right so i'm going to call agmv optimization a nim then we're going to call the quality flag so this flag will determine not only how many unique colors you have but also the um so essentially in my video earlier i talked about quantization so in order to map from a, a higher range of color depth to a lower range of color depth, I essentially have different lower bit depths of color. So the lowest one is 15-bit color depth, the next one is 17-bit color depth, and then the next one is 19-bit color depth. Um, and it's also much faster because we have to deal with a lot less colors when we're in low quality. But just for the sake, I'm going to just choose AGMV mid-quality. Um, obviously, you can put AGMV low quality, and then you can also put AGMV high quality. But I'm just going to go ahead and put mid for now, and then I'm going to put what compression scheme we're using. So AGMV supports two data compression algorithms to apply to the bit streams. It applies LZSS or LZ77 data compression. Now. The only reason to really use LZ77 is if you're on a really slow processor and you're doing, um, and, you, and your video resolution is particularly high and LZSS is too slow. But for even for the GBA, for the most part, I'm able to get away with using um, LZSS um, compression. I'm gonna call it AGMV LZSS compression. And that should work perfectly fine. So we're gonna go back to AGMV, go ahead and make that. And then we're going to go ahead and watch it um, work in real time. So the reason why it's not outputting anything yet is because it's actually going through and it was grabbing all of the unique colors of each individual image and essentially creating a histogram, which documented the frequency of each particular color to determine the 512 most important colors to put inside of our palette. Let's go and make sure that, that works. So we're going to call R to H and V. Oh, and there you go. Alrighty, so how do we get it to particularly work for the GBA, right? That's why most of you, I assume, are here. 
So we're actually going to do this in a bit of a roundabout way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to call um, the video function. So we're going to essentially cut our, our, our encoding process into the two between video and audio. So instead of putting them in both into the same format, I'm actually going to create two different files. Now, the reason why this is is a bit complicated and maybe it's mainly me just being lazy, but for now, just take it for what it is as per usual. So we're going to go here and want to put this as optimization GBA1. Now, again, you can go to the plans and figure out what's the difference between optimization GBA1, 2, and 3. Um, but I'm just going to use AGV optimization 1. And essentially, it's going to spit out a um, a header file that contains essentially our video. So we're going to go ahead and make that. I'm going to do that. The next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to take this WAV file and convert it to something that the GBA can understand, right? Because the GBA has no concept of files, um, unfortunately. So in order for it to essentially work with it, we're going to need to use a video tool in order to get it to convert to a, a GBA specific format. As you can see here, it created our header that we needed, which is just going to contain the AGMV file and it's going to contain this little file size here. So we're going to go ahead and open arg.wav in Audacity. I'm going to go and we're going to do essentially three particular things in Audacity. First things first, we're going to change the sample rate to 16,000. So choose between 16,000 or 8,000. Those are the only two I've really tested with. I'm sure it'll probably work with others, but for now we're just going to do it 16,000. We're going to go here to tracks, mix. Oops, let's go here. Tracks, so we're going to go ahead and mix stereo down to mono. And then we're going to resample it from whatever it was before, I think 24,000 to 16,000. We're going to go to file. We're going to go to export, export audio. We're going to go ahead and call it arg dot raw i'm going to do it as signed 8-bit pcm which is what the gba likes so now that we have essentially our video we're going to need to convert our audio into a header as well for the gba so we're going to call a utility function it's called agvm export raw 8 pcm so we're going to put in um our aug dot raw file that got generated and then we're going to need to put in how many um frames essentially um our agmv contain which it contain 103. i mean of course i could have figured that out by just doing 210 divided by two and had a pretty a close enough estimate 15 103 not that big of a a, a jump we're gonna go here and do make i call main on it and it should have generated our audio file let's make sure everything is fine and dandy Yep, just as we like it. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it inside of this simple GBA video in my examples. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in here uh, to make our lives easier. So here I'm gonna go over to Notepad++, I'm gonna grab that file size. I'm gonna open up the main here and the source that I provided that already has everything set up for your demo program. I'm gonna stick it inside of here um, to whatever it was before. And I believe we can just go ahead and cd to examples slash simple GBA video and go ahead and make that. And it should create our GBA ROM for us. So let's go and test it out. All right, that is way too slow. So let's go ahead and try 8,000. Again, unfortunately, you kind of got to play around with these numbers because I didn't do any advanced, you know, frame rate determination for the GBA. I kind of just play around with it and then figure out, you know, until it finally gives what I want. Let's see. Still a bit slow. All right, let's try 6,000. Okay, let's go ahead and make that. All right, is 6,000 our lucky try? There we go. We have a video on the GBA.
You can also skip forward, and you can also skip back. Um, so I included that in the demo as well. If you see here in the main, you can skip forward in the video, skip backwards, you can reset the video. So for longer videos, this would probably be a particularly useful functionality here in what I provided. But yeah, that's basically how you can get set up with AGMV. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to use the command line tool on how to set up your script files. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and grab our command line tool, our executable here. And um, I have everything that I need. I just need to do it now, create the script file. So the first thing here is gonna create this um, new file here, Notepad++. And so it's a very linear format. It follows a very particular structure. I'm gonna do exactly what we did here in main.c um, earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back. Exactly this, but without having to do all of the C source code stuff. So the first thing we're gonna put in is the video token. This is the first thing that my um, command line tool is gonna to search for. And you can put it in either decode or encode mode. So for our purposes, we're gonna put it in encode mode. We're gonna name it. So arg cli.agmv. Again, it's gonna be in the arg directory, agvm frame to bmp 1, 211, I believe 212 rather, at 320 by 240, 24 FPS. Um, we're going to put it as optanim, we're going to put it as, um, I guess, low quality, I think I put it mid quality, we're going to put it as lzss, and then we're going to link our wav file, so arg.wav, call this arg.agvs, so cd, we're going to call agvmcly arg.agvs. And it should perform exactly what we did before. And I'm just going to wait here and make sure that that works before I get out of here. Okay, let's see. Arg. Not AGMM Cly. Yep, and there we go. Nice.